Moving on to question two now, we have a question about improper integrals. So we've got this integral here, with the upper limit being infinite and the lower limit being zero. We're going to write 8x minus 12 over 2x squared plus 3 times x plus 1 dx, and this is equal to ln of k, where k is just a rational number to be found. So seven marks of this question, so quite a lot of marks, which would indicate there's probably going to be quite a few steps of working in this question. So what we've got here straight away, hopefully that you can see, is a partial fraction decomposition that needs to be performed before we can actually perform the improper integral. So let's get the partial fractions first and then we can perform the integration. So we've got two different factors here on the bottom. So we're going to have two fractions. But if we look at the first one here first, this 2x squared plus 3, this is a quadratic. So your numerator won't just be a constant, but it'd be a two constants would be ax plus b, for example. Okay? So just be careful for that because that's a quadratic. This will be over 2x squared plus 3. 2x squared plus 3. And we've got our plus c. And this is going to be over my next one, x plus 1. Because that's just the power of 1. So, partial fractions, how do we do this? Well, I've got my ax minus 12, so I need to make that equal to my numerator here and then multiply across. So, if we do that, I'm going to get ax minus 12. Well, this is going to be equal to x plus 1 lots of this. Okay, so x plus 1 lots of that. It's going to be times ax plus b. And I'm going to have plus c lots of this here, this 2x squared plus 3. So we do that, plus c lots of 2x squared plus 3. So now, now we need to obtain the values for a, b, and my c here. So how do we do this? Well, we've got to look at the x's here. And... How do we eliminate any of the x's here? Well, I've got an x plus 1 here. So if I sub in x equals minus 1, this will become 0. So it will eliminate my a and my b and give me a value for c here. So first, let x equal minus 1. So x equals minus 1. So what am I going to get with minus 1? Well, 8 times minus 1. So that would be minus 8, minus 12. So that would be minus 20. So I'm going to have minus 20 here. Minus 20. That will be equal, so this will just all cancel straight away because this is 0 now. And I'm going to get left with this here. I'm going to get c times 2x squared plus 3. Well, if x is minus 1, minus 1 squared is 1. Times that by 2, I get 2. And add the 3, I'm going to get 5. So minus 20 is equal to 5c. So now to get c, I just need to divide by 5. So therefore, c is equal to minus 4. Okay, so that's my c value. We still need the a and the b. So, let's have a go at getting B next. So, what can I do now to get my B term, my, my value for B? Well, can I sub X as a value in here that would give me that? Well, if I put 0 in, X is 0, it eliminates my A, and we have a value for C. So, we can work with that, right? So, let's do that. So, if X is 0, so if X is 0, I'm going to get 0 minus 12. So I'm going to get minus 12 on the left hand side. This is going to be equal to 0 plus 1. So I'm going to get 1 times b. So I'm going to get b here. And then I'm going to also get um, two lots of 0 squared. So that'll just be 0 plus 3. So I'm going to get plus 3c. But we know c is minus 4. So this will be 3 lots of minus 4, so that's minus 12. So I've got minus 12 is equal to b plus 3c. So this is minus 12. So minus 12 is equal to b minus 12. Okay, but if I try and balance this equation now, if I add 12 to both sides, I'm just going to end up with 0. So therefore, b will just be equal to 0. So we've got b, we've got c. All we need now is the a, and we can do the integration nice and easy. So, we want a now. 
So all we need to know is just pick a value for x, a nice easy value to work with, because we've got C, we've got B. So to get A now, we just need a nice easy value for x, and this should make it nice and easy. So you know, let's say I pick x is just 1. Nice easy number to work with, x is 1. And I'll sub this in. 8 times 1 is 8, minus 12, that's going to give me minus 4. So minus 4. That's going to be equal to, so let's put um, 1 in here. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'm going to get two lots of ax plus b, but we know b is 0. So I'm going to get two lots of a here. So two lots of a. Like so. And we also know our c is minus 4. And we know x is 1. So let's work out this bracket first. So 2 lots of 1 squared. So that's going to be 2 plus 3. So I'm going to get 5c. But c is minus 4. So that's going to be minus 5 times 4. Giving me minus 20. Now we can keep balancing. If I add 20 to both sides, I'll get a the 2a on its own. So 2a will be equal to 16. So 2a is equal to positive 16. So therefore, a is equal to 8. So we've done the partial fractions now. Now we can perform the integration. Okay, so let's rewrite our integral now. So therefore, put my infinity symbol in. Uh, believe it or not, that is infinity. I'm going to redo that, so that's not very good. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, zero is my lower limit. Now, again, we split this up how we did here. So my a is 8, so this is going to be ax, and we've got no b, right? b is 0, so it's going to be ax over my 2x squared plus 3. 2x squared plus 3. And I've got my plus c, but my c is minus 4, so it's going to be minus 4 over x plus 1. And this is with respect to x. Now, we need to perform the integration here. So, nice, easy, straightforward integration. If we integrate this bit first, well, what's the derivative of this? I'm going to get 4x. So, what would I have to times that by to get 8x? I'd have to times that by 2, right? So, I'm going to get 2 ln, and then you'll get whatever your denominator is. So, I'm going to get 2 ln um, 2x squared plus 3 in this case. Like so. Same again here. What's the derivative of x plus 1? Well, that would just be 1, right? And what do I have to times 1 by to get minus 4? Oh, well, 4 in this case. So that would be 4. So it's going to be minus 4. 1. And then my denominator again, which is x plus 1. So if we rewrite this now as 1 um, logarithm, this will be 1 of... Let's make sure I get my brackets right here. So I'm going to have my top bracket. So this will be 2x squared. Remember, if you're subtracting a logarithm off another logarithm, this would be a quotient as a single logarithm. So this will be 2x squared plus 3 all over um, x plus 1. But I'm going to do just... A, I've, I've kind of just skipped ahead here. Don't forget about the number in front. This number here can be raised as the power. So this 2 would be squared here. So this would be squared in my case. Oops, I've done it again today. I'm not doing very well. So, pen. so this is squared. And this here, the 4 can come onto the power here. So this would be to the power of 4. And I'm going to close the bracket. So we've got it as a single logarithm now. Now we can take the limit of this expression here. So I take the limit. I'm going to take the limit here now. As x tends to infinity. As x tends to infinity. So, as x tends to infinity, how do we work out the limit here? Because it looks like we've got a lot of things going on. Well, what you've got to think about when working out the limit as x tends to infinity is what's the dominant behaviour in the numerator and the denominator? Well, think about what happened if you expanded this numerator. You'd have 2x squared plus 3 times 2x squared plus 3. Well, hopefully it's clear that if you expand this numerator, you get a 4x squared straight away at the top right oh, sorry a 4x to the power of 4 at the top right 
don't worry about the other terms. Just think about what the highest power is. That's always going to be the dominant behavior. So you're going to have 4x to the power of 4. What would you get on the numerator? Uh, the denominator, sorry. Well, you've got an x plus 3 times an x plus 3 and so on. It's 4 times. So you get another x to the 4. So if we just do it up here, just to make this clear what's going on. I'm going to end up with 4x to the 4 over an x to the 4. Well, what do I get if I cancel this? Well, that x to the 4 will cancel with that one. So I'm just going to get left with 4, right? So the limit as x tends to infinity of this whole expression will just simply be 4. But this is the limit as x tends to infinity of ln. So this will be ln of 4. That's ln of 4. So that's the first part of the integration. Now we're going to have to subtract off and plug in my other value here, my 0. So... If we put 0 into here, 2 lots of 0 squared is 0, plus 3, and then square it. So 3 squared is 9. And then if I plug um, 0 in again, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm going to say what's going on here. This should be a 1. I'm going to say this isn't going to work. So this is a 1. Let's just change that. So that's a 1. Okay, so x plus 1. So you put 0 in here, plus 1. That's going to be 1. Raise that to the power of 4, and then that'll just be 1. So I'm going to get 9 over 4. Uh, sorry, 9 over 1. Oh my god, I'm, my brain's not working for this part now. So 9 over 1. So this is ln of 9 over 1. I'll just ln 9. Ln 9. And then if we write this as a single uh, logarithm, because it's just a rational number to be found, so it's going to be a fraction. So this will just be ln of 4 over 9. And there we have it. k is 4 over 9 as required. And there we go, that's question two, fully complete.